Technology Forum 2 at the indications for AV fistula, dialysis and transplantation. The real life scenario is that when a patient uh, comes to us, uh, we get very less time, rather, rather we have to act on the basis of the condition of the patient. The patient is more or less in a dying situation and so we have to initiate the dialysis so whatever in form uh, so that we save the patient but that is not the not the protocol or rather i would say not the motto of the treatment of a ckd patients uh, because it could be a earlier phenomenon where uh, we may have this opportunity to initiate this kind of uh, dialysis uh, and the mortality was very high uh, probably i would say in 2011-12 where uh, the life expectancy was six months. Now the recent data even in India showed that the mortality has increased drastically even in rural population. So the mortality is uh, improved uh, beyond six months is very high. So we need to be very much cautious so that the patient should be referred to a nephrologist in a proper time. I would not say it's a, in, a, in an early stage but in the proper time and so that we could have a very good management plan depending upon the scenario of the patient and a longer life expectancy, the good quality of life. That is the most important thing or the most important message that I need to percolate here. So when a patient uh, reaches end stage renal disease, what are the options left for us? Uh, so it is the renal replacement therapy. The renal replacement therapy either in the form of either dialysis or in the form of renal transplantation. So the renal transplantation is the best modality of therapy till today available, uh, though it's a very uh, less uh, available in particularly in India also, though we are increasing in number uh, throughout the world. The dialysis modality has are two, one is the hemodialysis and the peritoneal dialysis. And another modality is there that is uh, followed particularly in the Western countries, they, the, they offer for the for the not to go for any renal replacement therapy but go for the conservative management that is with an older group of patients and their life expectancy is small and so that not to go for that painful procedure that is there to initiate the dialysis or the other maneuvers so the patient should uh, die peacefully so the caregiver should be there and the caregiver should care for the symptoms like uremia that is nausea vomiting appetite pruritus etc etc the volume overload etc so these are the modalities of therapy. Now, uh, why we, uh, we are considering this ESRD uh, means uh, the dialysis because when the patient reaches ESRD, that is a CKD roadmap is given in 2012. It is a CKD EPI roadmap where it is clearly mentioned that, that there are five stages of chronic kidney disease. So stage one, stage two, so stage 3A, 3B, this is the most important stage, that is 3A and 3B, where nephrologist has to play a big role in, in management of CKD patients and then that can survive the life, that can, that can improve the quality of life and also that smooth transition from CKD instant renal disease to renal replacement therapy. So this CKD stage 3 is the very, very important in the life of a CKD patients. Next is a stage 4 CKD. The stage 4 CKD is a CKD stage where another very important landmark there, it is not a very, very uh, uh, longer expected uh, time period, but it is a transition from CKD to renal replacement therapy. And this is the stage where the patient is required to be counseled for the, for the renal replacement therapy. And if the they are ready for the transplantation, then the donor, then the ideal time, then the preemptive transplantation that is uh, in before the initiation of the dialysis you can go for the transplantation or lots of things can be discussed. Also the, the cost of the therapy. Most importantly, if the patient is ready for the dialysis, then either if it is a hemodialysis or the peritoneal dialysis, then the, the, the source or the access for the dialysis is very, very important. This is the stage where we need to create the AV fistula. And the most of the time it is failed. And it is failed to create AV fistula. It is very, very difficult to convince the patient for the, for, for uh, going for the AV fistula. Most of the time what happens if I say, that this is the stage where you have to go for AV fistula. So uh, refer to CTBS surgeon, go for, uh, go for this uh, fistula surgery. Most of the time, it is 80% of the time, patient actually flies. And I usually lost my patient. And that is the most important fear that the nephrologist even don't encourage the AV fistula creation at this stage. That is stage four of the CKD patients. But 
remember this is the stage where we should create the ab fistula access or if the patient is on is ready for the peritoneal dialysis then the access for the peritoneal dialysis catheter should be ready by this time period uh, when the patient reaches esrd that is ehgfr of less than 15 now it is the time to smooth transition to go for this renal replacement therapy not having the volume overload not having acute crisis in the form of say metabolic acidosis say for example the hyperkalemia say for example the severe pruritus vomiting etc whatever the uremic symptoms or the volume related symptoms or the electrolyte associated symptoms are actually developed so this smooth transition is very very important to maintain the quality of life and also to prolong the prolong the life expectancy in the ckd stage so when to refer a nephrologist, Dr. Sandeep Bhattacharya earlier told that uh, the, 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 this is a very important concern. Now, the, one study is published in 2022 by SGPJ group. They have shown that when in, a, in around, around 922 patients, they have shown that when the patient uh, refer early to a nephrologist, then the quality of life, prolongation of the life expectancy, the patency of the fistula, the smooth transition to the transplantation, the cost of therapy, the different complications like anemia, CKD, MBD all are reduced significantly if they are referred early. So this is very very important when to refer. So one is the advanced stage CKD, so CKD stage 4, CKD stage 5. Next is the patients having a proteinuria, albumin creatine ratio more than more than 300 milligram per gram or 300 milligram per day or even up to 30, more than 30 milligram, you can refer to a nephrologist. Next is the persistence of hematuria, that is uh, presence of more than 5 RBC per hyperfield. Persistent hematuria, that is most important, persistent hematuria. Next is persistent active urinary sediment. Persistent active urinary sediment means the more than 5 RBC per hyperfield in the urine as well as pus cell more than 5 per hyper field. This is another very important area even in diabetic patients the patient might have non-diabetic kidney disease that can be excluded by kidney biopsy and the other markers that are present that will be evaluated by the nephrologist. And another very important is that if the patient is losing GFR more than what is expected that is the more than expected means the EGFR loss may be 5 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square per year. But if it is more than that then definitely you have to calculate it and refer to a nephrologist. So these are the areas where the early referral is required and then a proper diagnosis can be achieved uh, so the other things cannot be missed. Uh, the cause of CKD in our country is, uh, is, is, is again diabetes and so the diabetes is ca causing around 50% of the total, total population, uh, uh, the CKD population burden and the other than the diabetes it is the hypertension and the other glomerulonephritis and the non-conventional medications those are the culprit factors. So diabetic population again uh, it, is, it is very important to go for the for these uh, different stages of CKD and referral to the nephrologist and proper intervention is very very important. So I uh, give one example of, of a case uh, which is again a prototype case that we actually get. It is a 56 years old male referred to us in an acute condition where the patient is having a right internal jugular catheter inserted for more than three months and uh, patient having volume overload. So we got the patient, we dialyzed the patient and we changed the catheter from the from the uh, right internal jugular catheter to the palm cath. So this is another modality where it is a temporary to semi-permanent access that is palm cath insertion. So we made that palm cath insertion done because the fistula creation was not possible at that time. So patient was stabilized after three months and then we created the AB fistula. Unfortunately, the three months internal jugular catheter which was there that actually caused the significant central venous stenosis. And that ultimately leads to what you have seen here. It is the AB fistula malfunction. And so there is a steel phenomenon. There is a resistance and ultimately AB fistula failure was there and patient was receiving very poor quality dialysis. So ultimately we could save the patient by counseling, got a disease donor and ultimately the patient was transplanted. But that should not have been the case if the patient had been referred to us earlier as the patient was seen by a general physician from a uh, rural area and she was seen by, by 
thoroughly patient was very much very much compliant so that is the most important and but he was not referred unfortunately so uh, planning for preemptive kidney transplantation or dialysis when it is in stage 4 ckd that is gfr 15 to 20 so skipping these slides, I have already mentioned indications for initiation of the dialysis. These uh, indications for dialysis has been changed uh, in, in, in 2010-11-12 when we have uh, earlier we had a particular cutoff value of creatinine levels, uh, creatinine 5, creatinine 6. But this has been changed in this particular area where in 2011 we had ideal study that is a randomized control study uh, on dialysis population which is a late versus early initiation of the dialysis where EGFR was 5 to 7 it was the delayed initiation and 10 to 15 was considered as the early initiation and they have shown that with the early versus late there was no such variation in terms of or, or significant benefit in terms of quality of life the cost of therapy the mortality and other complications so this is this was ultimately changed the guideline from absolute value of creatinine to the uremic symptoms if it is there like say for example absolute pruritus if the patient is having nausea vomiting intractable uh, 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 loss of appetite then weight loss then if the patient is having a uh, volume overload then the electro this electrolytemia so the the criteria was changed and so we are following this uh, guideline uh, since then now uh, there are different studies that i have shown there are the jumble studies there are very busy slides but lots of studies are there they have shown that there is no benefit of initiation of early dialysis rather than the late dialysis number one Number two, one modality versus other modality is uh, uh, hemodialysis versus peritoneal dialysis and they have shown that the transplantation is much more beneficial than the, uh, than the dialysis per se. Now coming to transplantation in a particular population it is diabetes. Earlier it was said that that diabetes is a contraindication for the transplantation. So the earlier population we don't have much data about the diabetes patients in trans transplantation. But in one particular study, landmark study by Wolf, he has shown that there is a significant mortality benefit by 73% when the patient was undergone transplantation in diabetic population. So this has changed the scenario and uh, so we are now doing more and more transplantation in the diabetes population. But there are problems, why they actually are scared for doing transplantation in dialysis population? Uh, sorry, in diabetic population as well as the complication of diabetes patients in dialysis also very very high. Number one, it is the infection both in the dialysis population as well as in the transplant population in diabetes patients. Number two, the atherosclerotic burden of the diabetes population that was also also very very high so that the atherosclerotic arteries is actually causes problem in the access that is epiphyseal failure more in 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 dialysis population and transplantation is having problem with the renal artery stenosis in the post transplant period even so and the cardiovascular complication is again very very high with this group of patient in the in the dialysis as well as transplantation but this cardiovascular mortality has been increased I means reduced or improved in transplantation in diabetes patients even if the patient is having uh, ejection fraction of 30 percent we have seen that it is improved to 60 percent post transplantation in a diabetic population so this is a uremic milieu that causes this reduction in the the this this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, ejection fraction and it is improved after correction of this uh, uh, uremic milieu post transplantation so always if the it is if the opportunity is available counsel for the transplantation in a even in a diabetic population more and more another point just i would like to Mention here is the very less uh, discussed as well as very less used and I have never seen uh, simultaneous pancreas kidney transplantation in, in our setup that is in SSKM. I don't know about the other private setup whether this is done or not but again this has to be uh, discussed more and more and we have to increase the number of patients recruited for this simultaneous kidney pancreas transplantation to the particular group of patients by the type 1 diabetes patients so that the mortality is increased improved uh, around 17 to 70 percent in the, the western studies that are available so so to summarize uh, 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 my talk it is uh, 
uh, ab fistula the dialysis and the transplantation these three are very very important rather it's a life for the ckd patients and the advanced ckd patients proper transition from ckd end stage to renal replacement therapy is the ideal and that has to be discussed when the patient in stage 4 ckd by all who are actually caregiver for this particular group of patients where you are a general physician where you are diabetologist where you are nephrologist the CKD stage 4 is the stage where the AB fistula creation has to be done, the peritoneal access creation has to be done and the transplantation has to be dealt with so that the preemptive transplantation if possible can be done in this particular stage. And so with this we can have a good outcome in terms of morbidity and mortality as we have seen a good expectancy, life expectancy dramatically changed for the last 10 years or so. Thank you. Thank you for patient hearing.